Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steers, and today, chums, for you guys in the viewer verse, I'm going to be talking to Todd Howard. Yes, not directly. I'm using clips from Kinda Funny's X Cast, but yeah, I'm going to make it seem like I'm talking to him. If you want to see the full X Cast video, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner, people. So yeah, go check it out and be over there. Anyway, so here we go. Let's go and ask Todd some questions. Well, hello there, Todd. Thank you very much for joining me. Well, Captain Steve, player of No Man's Sky. And that brings me on to my first question, Mr. Todd Howard. So I would very much like to play Starfield in a similar sort of vein as I play No Man's Sky. Want to put boots on the ground on your planets, scan the creatures, catalogue them, watch their behaviours, and maybe scan all the flora, fauna, all that sort of stuff, and the minerals and all that sort of shenanigans, and kind of ignore your storyline, because I'm hoping to make individual videos on each of the planets and what those planets have, whether they're resource heavy or whether they've got life. So yeah, anyway, can I do that, Mr. Howard? Thanks. I think that's, you know, the million dollar question as it comes to a game like this. It's a great question, one that we honestly struggled with early in the project. We wanted to do the planets because we like to give you that choice. Where do you want to go? You feel like you would want that choice in a game like this. And so first it was technically, could we pull it off? And you know, we did technically be able to, you know, draw these planets, make them feel believable on the screen. Um, now, obviously, it's procedural, okay? So th there's no way we're going to go and handcraft an entire planet. What we do is we handcraft individual locations, and some of those are placed specifically, obviously the main cities and other quest locations, and then we have a suite of them that are generated or placed when you land, depending on that planet. Now, I'll also say for us, we view it as giving you, when you look at a system, here's the menu of things you could do. And like science, and we're pushing it, about 10% of those planets have life on them. And we're pushing it to the edge of what do people think, what planets are in that Goldilocks zone versus planets that have resources. Right. You know, I think it is, it is a moment when you land on some of these barren planets. And again, we will generate certain things for you to find on them. But if you look at a planet, you see the resources, it has things you want. There is, I love the Buzz Aldrin quote, the magnificent desolation. I think there's a certain beauty to landing on those and feeling I'm one of the only people or the only person to ever visit this planet. Um, so I, it, it's a difficult design thing. If you add too many things, if it's generating too many abandoned bases or towers or things to find, it starts feeling too gamey in some of those locations. So I think we've dialed that in um, pretty well, uh, depending on the planet that you're on. And so um, we hope everybody you know, enjoys it for what it is, but it is an exploration different than we've had, where you're landing, you're exploring around that landing spot, and then you're probably going somewhere else. Well, okay. So, Mr. Howard, just been looking at some of my phone sort of questions and follow-up questions for that question. And uh, yeah, a lot of questions there. Anyways, <laughs> so when you actually land on these procedural worlds, are they going to be as empty and as barren as some of the planets that we find inside of, say, No Man's Sky? Or are they going to be populated by something? Um, you know, and some of these creatures, I mentioned I like to you know, encounter large fauna. Some of the large fauna that we see in No Man's Sky, they're not too dangerous. I don't really fear them. But in your other titles that you've done, like Skyrim and Elder Scrolls and all that sort of shenanigans, there's creatures that people know and love, Todd, that are freaking dangerous. Aren't we going to have any hazardous type creatures that we need to stay away from? Are there any that you want to tell us about, Mr. Howard? And yeah, and also tell us about the planets. Are they going to be barren wherever we land? We have a lot of biomes. We yeah. do look at temperature. We look at the radiation. We look at all of those things on a planet so that your suit and your protection, you can get certain ailments if you're not ready and certain weather things can come through um, with all of that. So there are obviously planets that might have one type of biome and there are planets that have a whole bunch and their creatures and the uh, plants and everything go with the biome. So there's a whole part of the game where surveying a planet like discovering all of the flora and fauna and resources plants also have traits 
usually you know, geological things that are inherent to that planet and uncovering those. And if you fully survey a planet, that data is actually worth a lot of money, credits in the game that you can sell. So there's a whole part of the game that's really just doing that. It's a little more, I almost describe it zen-like. You know, you can get on a planet where the creatures there, some of them can be aggressive, where it can get dangerous uh, if you're exploring the planet. And you can watch the creatures. We've actually had a problem at times with the predator creatures going and killing all of the more peaceful creatures you're coming across. No. Why are they all dead? And then you realize there's something dangerous in the area. So I would say this, that we, we do everything that you mentioned and we really try to mix it up and spend a lot of time balancing that. So it is fun minute to minute, but you also know what you're getting into. Okay, Todd, well, I think you've pretty much answered all the questions that I've got there. No real follow-up ones when it comes to explorations. Thank you very much for the heads up on all of that. It sounds freaking awesome. And yeah, it sounds it sounds awesome that I can just jump on in, relax, and play this game without sort of having to go through the story. But what you mentioned about like, the hazard protection and things like that, and making sure that I'm ready to go on certain planets could sort of make me feel that I need to push on with the story at times. But yeah, I'm already looking forward to it. Thank you for your time. Salute to Mondo. And yes, people inside of the viewerverse, like I said, that was just roleplay. Roleplay. If you want to see the full video, I'll put it inside the video description as well. Be sure to go check that out. I'm going to go drink the rest of my tea now. Thank you very much for watching. Cheery bye. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again. Thank you.